My name is Hannah Coyle. I'm the Retail Merchandising Coordinator for Club Pilates. So some of you I have had the pleasure of meeting, if not, hello. Welcome. <laughs> um, so I like to start off by doing a hand raise of the owners that I have first in the class today. Owners, all right, we got, oh, okay. Wow, I, sometimes it's like one or the other. And then general managers, okay, great. It's kind of even here. Um, well, welcome. I know you guys have had a, a day of a lot of information. Um, you'll have a little bit more from me today as we go over retail. So a little bit about what I do for Club Pilates is I discuss these three things. The retail selling process, which you'll have a manual right in front of you on, um, and that includes what does selling look like, right? How do you sell to a member in studio? How do you promote our product? The importance of product knowledge, um, how to upsell, right? All of those things that create a sale. The merchandising, so what does it look like in your studio? What is the slat wall displayed like? Do you have a floor-based fixture? If so, what does that look like? And maybe you guys don't even know what merchandising means, right? So that's what the merchandising manual is for, is to teach you those. Um, and then the third manual is markdown. So you guys know the life of retail. It goes in waves. There might be a hot trend, something that sells fantastic. And on the other hand, there might be something that doesn't sell at all and you're like, I don't know, I thought it was cute, but apparently nobody else does, right? So what to do with those items when they're just not working? Um, so those are the three manuals that I will go over with you today. Um, I also take care of the inventory process. So for those of you owners in here who have a few studios open as well, that's something that you might have had a question on. Um, and that's what I'm here for. I teach that process, how to input all of the products that you have in your studio or that you not yet have but will be receiving and how to get them into the system and properly manage your inventory. So do any of you ever go shopping, right? And you're like, all right, I'm going shopping today. I'm gonna get a great outfit, I'm going out. And you walk into a store and you're there to buy, right? You have some cash in your pocket, but nobody ever says hello right? You know that you want to spend money there. You know that you want to buy a killer outfit, but when nobody approaches you or just acknowledges that you're in their store, you kind of get that weird feeling of like, mm, do I really want to invest here? I don't know if I'm going to be helped the way that I want, right? I want to be helped for the money I'm going to spend. So that's why it's so important. And often I hear, and I am going back a few points here, but I'm going to get to suggest, um, I often hear that, you know, the studio, we're so busy, we're signing in memberships. After demo classes, it's a, it's a busy time, but just having that heads up service, and by that I just mean being aware, right, of who's in your studio is so important because you want them to feel like they're at home. And if they are shopping in retail, even if you're behind that counter, just saying, hey, I see you over there. I'm just finishing up here, but if you have any questions, let me know. It's just so much more inviting, right, than, than nobody saying anything at all approaching the member. If you have the opportunity to do so, really removing yourself from behind that counter, and maybe you're over in the retail space. Maybe you're standing there and you're fixing some tags. Maybe you're refolding, right? And then as people start to come in, it's not as aggressive when you go to, hi, how are you today, right? And they're like, I'm just looking, right? That's their often response. I'm good, I don't wanna buy anything, thank you. It's, you're already there, they're in the space, and maybe you're gonna show them the item that you're folding right then and there, right? Approaching that member. And then suggesting, if you guys have new salespeople who are kind of nervous to start that selling, right, instead of cashiering, cashiering is very easy. It's they want to buy something, I ring them up, they're on their way. But we want to suggest product to them. We want to tell them, you have to have this. This is my favorite, I'm wearing it right now, and I need you to buy it as well because it's so great, right? But how do, how do they do that? So start by suggesting something small. If this is a salesperson who's like, I've never sold a thing before. Well, that's a little, little scary, but <laughs> besides that point, right? Besides that, we wanna start off small. So maybe it's toe socks. Does anybody know why toe socks would be a great thing to start with? 
Ah, oh, music to my ears, it's just so great. Um, yes, because they're a requirement to take class. That's your bread and butter. They make up 60% of your retail business. That's a big portion, but if we're just cashiering that product, when they're coming up and just buying one, maybe two, right? What if we were suggesting that they buy four pair because they have an unlimited membership, or they're buying two pair because they come in multiple times a week, right? That's suggesting, and now I'm talking ahead of myself, but upselling. So going on to the sales point here, who would like to read that? Uh-oh, two, you, one of you go ahead. Sell them something. Start by educating them on your favorite piece. By now, the members should feel like they've, they have to own that item. Start out small if you're not comfortable selling a more expensive item quite yet. Show the member different ways to wear garments by continuing to add them to the sale until they tell you to stop. <laughs> you are the expert. Make sure the member is educated on why they need it. Perfect. So that's, again, going to back to that point. You go into the store and you want to find an outfit, right? And you walked around the store and you found this really cute shirt, but you have nothing else to wear with it. You don't know. You're like, I wanted to buy pants, shoes, but you don't really know what to pair with it. Well, the person who works there, they should know what they have to offer. So that's when upselling is so important when you're in the studio is that you show them different ways to wear each item. Um, when I, I, my background, I didn't even tell you, is with Nordstrom. So managing there for five years, I, I had one store manager who every day over the intercom would say, she was the sweetest lady, but she'd say, all right, everyone, in the softest voice ever. <laughs> it was so, so nice to start the day off with, but she says, remember, people return items, not outfits. Well, if you let that resonate, it actually makes a lot of sense because I know the times that I've invested in an outfit in a store, I never return it because I always go back to, well, I can always wear it with that outfit, right? But if you buy that one item and you continue to try it on at home, and it doesn't really look good with anything, you're more likely to bring it back. So it's very important that the staff in your guys' studio is creating outfits for your members versus just selling them a t-shirt or versus selling them a legging. Um, somebody, would they like to read follow-up? Ask them how they are liking their purchase or purchases. If they have any concerns, do your best to, ser to service their needs. This might include choosing a different item or changing a size. We want our members to be satisfied with their items. Thank you. Don't be passive. We never want members to leave empty-handed. And have fun. Have fun with it. Be authentic and curious about the members' needs and wants. That part is very easy to do, right? Um, so all of this really creates what a, sell, a sale should look like. Now, if you're in studio and you have a new hire coming on, this is what I would have them review. I would print this out for them and have them sit down and take a moment to read this entirely. If your team is rock stars, right, which they all should be, and they're very good at selling, this is the quick selling tips that we just read over that they can go and look at high level. Yes, I'm already doing that. Yes, I'm adding on. Yes, I'm boosting their confidence when they're checking out. And I'm having fun, of course. So making sure that one of the two, that's the way that I wanted this handbook to be read, is at a glance, or if somebody really is struggling with selling retail and they just aren't getting it, um, it goes into a couple different things. Now, getting to know the member is very important. We never obviously want to judge a book by its cover, right? So we don't know who is really wanting to be outfitted in Club Pilates, or maybe this person is doesn't want to wear our apparel or just doesn't have time to shop. So a few things here, and I'll read them through. Um, is this an existing member of Club Pilates, or is this their first time in the studio? So. That is an important thing to understand because the person who's here often, you might say, oh, for example, I have this lady in my studio and she only wears pink. Everybody has a pink lady in their studio, right? <laughs> and you're like, she's always decked out in pink. Okay, but if something comes in that's pink, you're instantly thinking of her and you're reaching out to her. Or maybe she's in the studio and she doesn't see it, so you're going to bring it over to her, to her and say, you know, Jane, I have the perfect item for you. I know you'll love it because it's pink, and I have one left in your size. Verse, 
the person who's in for the very first time, right? We don't know them very well. We want to get to know them. We want them to sign up for a membership, but we, we don't know what they like yet. And maybe they don't want to wear something that's a locational item because they're not a member. So that's two very different areas where you need to understand your customer. Um, I do highly recommend, and I'm kind of plugging this in here, if you do go back to your studio and create a bundle, I highly recommend creating a new member bundle, right? Creating it with a locational item because they just signed up, right? We want them to be part of the family. Toe socks and a water bottle. That is the perfect beginner's pack for a new member. But again, if somebody is just taking a demo class, we're going to change the way we sell to them. Yes, yeah, of course. Um, so a locational item, two to three pairs of toe socks, and a water bottle. That's the perfect starter kit for a new member. Now, did they just finish a class? Most likely, if they did, they might be a little sweaty and they probably don't want to try on clothes, right? Well, that comes back to product knowledge, and we'll discuss that in a minute. But it's very important that we want to show them the new things maybe before class instead of after when they don't want to try anything on. Um, so making sure we know, maybe that's starting that conversation. Hey, how did your class go today, right? I know that you've been taking this class. How do you feel? Do you feel like your body is improving? Um, are you excited to take your next class? Did they come prepared for class? Now, this is very important. This goes back to our toe socks conversation. They're a requirement. They are a requirement for a few reasons. Do any of you know what they are? Yes. Cleanliness. Cleanliness, okay. So to stay sanitary. Safety. Safety, yep. One more. Performance. So if you have a pair of toe socks on, right, you're going to enhance your performance by keeping your feet in the loops, right? You're going to not be slipping on the reformer. Safety, walking in and out and around the studio. There's, you know, big reformers and different equipment around. And then to stay sanitary, your feet are in the loops. So are a lot of other people's. So we want to make sure our equipment stays clean um, for the next person working out. Now, here's the important piece. What do you do when somebody comes into a class and doesn't have a pair of toe socks on and says, I'm here all the time, you know, can I just, I don't want to buy any today, can I just take a class without it, right? No. I'm sorry, unfortunately, and then you list those reasons, but for your convenience, we offer them right here, right? Or in the case, and I always say this, some studios are like, oh, no way, we won't do that, but in the case, that they don't want to purchase them, you can have a few extras. Please wash them. But <laughs> you can have a few extras for them to wear for that class because here's what happens. And I can vouch for this because I was taking classes and somebody came in and she really didn't want to buy them today. So they let her take the class. But me as a student saw this, so did 11 other people. And I thought to myself, well, if I forgot my toe socks, I know that they would let it slide, right? And that's such a bummer because now those 11 people are going to have that in their mind for the next time they forget. So it's very, very important. Now that is a sale for you guys. If you see somebody without socks, you can just say, aha, here we go. Let's walk you over. Let's see what toe socks you'd like to buy, what style you like, so on and so forth. Um, now what can you figure out about the member? Well, we have the pink lady, right? We know she likes pink. We might have the mom. The mom's coming in and taking class, and she's running out the door because her kid's sitting on the iPad, and now he has to go somewhere else. So that's probably somebody you're not going to try to take five minutes and sell to, and she's going to try on clothes, right? So we're just getting to know the member. But maybe there's a lady who's always in and looking around and seeing what's new. That's somebody that we definitely want to approach, get to know them, what colors do they like, what size are they, um, and what are they looking for. So that's something and some ways to ask yourself, do I know this person or how can I better sell to them? Um, again, going back to your guys' studio, when your staff is you know, either new or existing, I highly recommend that they sit down because if they're not 
doing this already, if they're not getting to know their customers, then we are already behind. Now selling tips. These are some great things that I like to review. Um, as you guys are listening to the conversation your staff is having, these are some things I like to call greeting grenades. That means we don't, they're not good. Okay, so we want to avoid greeting such as, are you doing okay, right? These are, these are questions that somebody can answer yes or no to. Are you doing okay? May I help you? Let me know if you find something. Or finding everything okay, right? So nobody is going to elaborate on any of those questions. They're gonna say, yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, I'm good. Oh no, I don't need help, thank you, right? They're not, it's, then you don't wanna approach the conversation and say, oh, well, do you wanna buy this? Because they've already told you no or yes. But trying to start the conversations with more inviting questions such as, how was your class today? They can't just say no, right? They have to kind of give you a little bit of an answer. And then that opens the door to a conversation. Um, do you have any nice plans after this? Or it's a beautiful day outside, are you able to enjoy it? And compliment them, of course, on something that they're already wearing. Maybe it's something they bought, and then you can talk about that item as well. You'll notice throughout this manual that there's instructor tips or general manager tips. Now, for franchisees, there is a separate manual, and if that is not in here today, it's available on FranConnect. I also have all of these documents available on FranConnect that you guys can download and print off for your team. A little bit about the Club Pilates recommended dress code. It's very important that as leaders in the studio that you guys are really leading that whole uniform, right? By example. So that means you're wearing the product that we offer. I highly discourage um, staff to wear logoed items such as you know the Nike running down the side or Adidas or a, a sweatshirt that has a performance brand on it because we do not want them to walk out right and go and purchase maybe the item that we're wearing today because they like it so much they thought they'd go to Lululemon right we want to show them that whatever they're wearing or staff is wearing in studio is something that's available to them and if not maybe there's something similar um, if you do have um, the opportunity, I would highly recommend, um, if you have not, who has, whose studios have not opened yet? Okay. So you're going to receive your initial retail order, and that's going to be a wide variety of items. Once it's all checked into Club Ready, you want to have staff try on every single item that's available in their size. And this leads me into the importance of product knowledge. So when you receive that big order, right, that's the largest order you're going to get probably at one time, that $5,000 worth of merchandise, you want them to be the experts. So going back to earlier, what about that person that is done working out and they're like, oh darn it, I forgot to try on those leggings I really like, right? Well now they're sweaty, they don't wanna try it on. But what you can do is you can come back and say, it's okay, I've tried this on myself, and I normally wear a small, but I size down to an extra small because they're very forgiving, right? Why don't you go ahead and take them home today, try them on, maybe with other things you have at home, and if there is a problem, you wanna exchange the size, bring them back during your next class, right? That's overcoming the obstacle of somebody who doesn't want to try on in studio and somebody who is just going to walk out because they didn't try it on earlier or they just don't feel like it anymore. So the importance of product knowledge is huge, not for just a brand new studio who's opening and want to you know, have a successful soft opening and grand opening. That will help, but once you're in sustainable business, it's very important that every single shipment you guys bring in, that it's tried on by your staff. So maybe you order from Splendid, it's a brand new brand that we offer in our current approved vendor assortment. And you get an amazing shipment in, but has it been tried on by everybody in the studio? Do we know how Splendid fits? The tops, the bottoms, the sports bras, everything. So really allow your staff to have even 10 minutes to try on. Um, a fun thing we 
have talked about on calls and that studios do is they create an inspiration board. So they'll have everybody try on uh, either it's a brand or maybe it's a different legging, right? And they post all of those pictures, more of an internal thing, not to show all of the members, but it's really seeing how that same product fits on different people's bodies. And it really inspires your team to get behind that item and push it so that you can sell through it and get something else. Now in this manual, it has a question and answer page. That will be very helpful for you. Um, if you're in studio and you get some questions such as, what's your return policy? Great question, it's in here. The return policy that we offer or recommend at a corporate level is two weeks, unworn and tags attached. Now, I really don't think that you guys will ever battle, per se, with returns. Um, that that's going to be something that you deal with every day, I really don't think that. However, there will be times where somebody comes in and has a return and, and it might be very different from what you've ever heard before. So in the case that somebody brings in a pair of very worn leggings and they just said, you know, I just don't like them anymore, right? Well, we want to take care of our customers, right? We don't want to lose a member over a pair of leggings. That would be silly. So it needs to be taken care of case by case. So maybe you do accommodate that person that one time, but letting them know, you know, this is a one-time thing. I will definitely take care of you. Let's go ahead and issue you some store credits so you can get something else that you would like. Um, but the tags do need to be attached in, in order to return this item next time. Now, if somebody comes in and it's totally defective, right? Then 100%, we're going to issue the credit back to their original tender totally fine. We want them to be satisfied um, with their purchase and feel that, you know, they can trust buying things from us. Now, in the case that the tags are attached, it's unworn and everything's totally fine, then I would definitely issue them a credit again. But two weeks is the time frame that we set on this because you guys are a studio, right? You only have so much product. So if they decide that they just want the pair of leggings in a large versus a medium, if they come back in a month later, who's to say you guys have that legging anymore? You might not. Um, in the case now, I'm sure some of you are familiar with the wholesale mall, that allows you to place orders. If they, if you don't have their size available and you go into the mall, you could reorder that for them. But again, two weeks is a time frame that allows it to still be available without just creating a problem. Um, so that might be a question you get here and there. Sizing. Well, sizing, we now offer 2XL. That's something that was a big ask over the course of 2017. Um, the question and answer page is on seven. That was a big ask over the course of 2017, and now that is available. So that is so exciting. I highly recommend you get to know the people in your studio, which we reviewed already today, but understand what what demographic are you in? Are all your members smalls and extra smalls? Maybe, some are, but then maybe you have only extra, like large to extra large, right? That's going to change the way that you buy in the future. So the sooner you get to know that, the better, because you can cater your buy to what people are wearing. Um, so that's very important there. So how many of you know what merchandising means? Nobody knows what merchandising means? All right, I see a few hands. Okay. So merchandising is the way that products are displayed on fixtures. The product, which I wish I always, have you guys seen Fixer Upper? Side note. Yeah, right? They have those like, when they say, are you ready to see your, you know, and then they pull it away. I wish I had one of those that was a slat wall because every time I come in here, there's not one here. So you guys will just have to imagine a lot with me. Um, during this handbook, but merchandising is truly the way it's displayed on your slat wall, on your four-way, and using the brackets to configure the wall. So the different brackets that we have are really three, there's not too many, and you probably have seen them, if you haven't, let me know, is the waterfall bar. The waterfall bar is slanted down, 
and it has knobs on it that space out the hangers. Have you all seen that? All right. There's a U-bar. The U-bar is where all of the merchandise is side hung. Can you imagine that one? All of these are going to be starting on page 22 if you want to see a picture. And the last one is a shelf. Super easy. Those are the main three brackets that we use to merchandise our product on the slat wall or on the four-way. If I can recommend one thing to you, it would be to utilize this manual when you get your soft opening order because it will make your job 10 times easier. Um, when I first started, this is what I did for one month, is wrote all of these. Now, I, I've used my experience and what I've learned at my past places to provide you with something that would make your jobs easier um, and share some different ways to be successful in the retail area. And one of that would be merchandising. So starting on page 22, there is, you should have five in this one, five slat wall layouts. What that means is that is five different ways to configure your slat wall. The best part is, is that you can start off by choosing your favorite one, and every month you can implement a new one, and then once you're done with those five, you can start over. So it's really user-friendly. Um, I have tested out implementing one of these walls, and it takes me about 10 minutes to have an empty slat wall, right? We're envisioning again. An empty slat wall, completely blank, and then to fill it with all of those brackets. So as you'll see in the pictures, we have U-bars, we have waterfall bars, and shelves. The only other fixture that we do have is a hook that you can put on the slat wall to display toe socks or loops or headbands. And then you're going to choose a slat wall, which again starts on page 22. Once you've chosen your favorite one, some people ask me, do you have a favorite? And I'm like, no, I like them all. I, they're all inspiring in a different way. So no, I don't have a favorite. No, it's not ranked from worst or best to worst. Um, they're just five different options for you guys. All you need to do is follow the red blobs, right, all around until all of the fixtures are placed. Um, each have a little bit of writing in them. Once you have implemented your slat wall layout, you then return to the first page of the merchandising manual. And you're going to start the rack up process. The rack up process is a very important bit for you guys, and it will save you a lot of time, I promise you. But to help you with the rack up process, I highly recommend you purchase a rolling rack. A rolling rack you guys can purchase at Target, Walmart, Ikea, Amazon. Um, we don't have them on the mall currently, but that is something that I am working on. I think it would be a great thing to offer you guys. Having a rolling rack in your studio allows you to do this um, rack up process a lot quicker and merchandise overall because the idea is when merchandising, everything comes off the wall and then gets replaced on the wall. It's not just taking handfuls and taking this handful and moving it here, right? And taking that one and moving it down here and then it's done, right? That's not how we merchandise. We wanna refresh it. So the rolling rack will be very, very helpful. Now, once all of your merchandise, because it will come in boxes and you will have to unwrap it and you'll have to hang it up. So once you have done that, I would highly recommend sizing it first from smallest to extra small in the front to double X in the back. Once that's done and available to you on rolling racks, you can then create the rack up. So the rack up is one of every product that you own in studio. So the way to do it and the nice part about sizing it first is that most likely it'll be the smallest size of every one. So when you go to fill in the product, it's still sized. You just grab the handful and put it behind. Once you have it all on the rolling rack, it will show you at a glance what you have to work with. So it will show you how many leggings you have, how many sweatshirts, 
what colors, right? Is it all pink again? Or maybe it's black and white, maybe it's blue and green. It'll show you your color patterns. Um, you can then take that rack up process and start placing one of each of the items on the slat wall. So you're gonna have your rolling rack here, right? And this is your slat wall and it has all the brackets on it. You can then take one of everything and put it on the wall. Once one of everything is placed on the wall, you can take a step back and look at it. When you look at it, you can see, do I like the layout that I've chosen? If you don't, the best part is you only have to move one item. You don't have to move handfuls of product because the worst is, and I hear this all the time, they're like, well, you know, we merchandise once a month because it's just exhausting. And then I, I move it all around and then I hate it. And then I, it's so hard because I have to move handfuls everywhere, right? Well, the rack up process, you place one of everything. So once one of everything's placed, if you don't like it, it's simple. Just move the shirt to here and the pant to here. Now, once you've found the slat wall that you love, the layout, right? All you need to do is fill in the product. So now that it's sized or has been sized, all you do is take the rest of that style and you put it behind the style on the wall. Easy, right? It really is that easy. Um, it, it's a technique that I never knew and once I learned it, I'm like, oh my gosh. If I <laughs> had to do the other way again, I don't even know what I would think. It's very easy. So that brings me to my next point is the timeline of merchandising. What does that look like? So the fixture layout, so we're going back to our imaginary slat wall, the bracket layout should change once a month. That means you take all the brackets off. You take all the clothes off, of course, but all of the brackets come off as well. That should be done once a month. Again, you have five options, so rotate through. The merchandising, how often do you think that should be done? Every week. I mean, I'm a pretty good shopper, like I'm obsessed, so I'll go in and I'll be like, no, old, right? Nothing new, but that does happen when you go into the studio and you're there. Like I was going three times a week, and if there was not something new over there, I wouldn't even. I'd just be like, oh, okay. And then if you see something new, you're like, that was not there yesterday, you know. And you go over and you just look to check it out. But the best thing is, is it's very deceiving with merchandising. Is that sometimes you'll change it on a weekly basis and you won't even have anything new, and people will be like, oh my gosh, you got some new stuff, and you're like. Yes, uh-huh, I did. Really, you didn't, you just moved it around. More visible, right? Totally happens all the time. I actually would have employees who would say, they'd come in and I was merchandising all morning and they'd be like, this would drive me nuts. Oh, Hannah, we got some new stuff in. And I'm like, we've had that for two weeks. Thank you, <laughs> welcome to work, you know? But um, it does make a really big difference. So it should be done on a weekly basis. But what's so important is that you're consistently checking your inventory levels. So checking your inventory levels is going to be going into Club Ready. So Club Ready is um, where you'll find your inventory levels. So you'll go into, and I can kind of direct you, it's going into reports, products, and inventory. And then you download that Excel spreadsheet, which is the it list it lists your inventory. Now there is a document, so all franchise owners in here, there's a document that I created. Um, it is in Fran Connect, or you can reach out to me. Um, and it tells you step-by-step -step pictures how to pull your inventory, because what you need to do is not pull how much you own total, it's how much you own in toe socks, and then toe socks, and then retail. It's two separate things. We need to see for both. Two important things to write down. What are the minimums, right? Everybody says, well, how much should I own in retail and toe socks? Toe socks, we recommend you own $3,600 in retail inventory always. Why? Because that fills up an entire toe sock display plus one to two counter displays. For retail, the recommended minimum is $5,000. $5,000 is what you initially start with in your soft opening order. That ensures that you have a full and appealing slat wall and four way. So when merchandising after you've created your rack up, you just wanna ensure that you've spread out the color, right? That your 
slat wall is appealing and eye-catching. Now, you don't want it to look like a rainbow wall. You don't want to see 20,000 colors, right? If there's an off color, and I'll have that problem, not problem, it's not a problem, um, but I'll have that happen to me, utilize the four-way because the four-way is a perfect area to create what I call a mini color story. So that can be used for that random teal shirt that you have, and then you can put white and black with it, or it's that one-off area that you can create a mini little slat wall presentation, um, and that's where those random colors should um, live. But creating outfits. So when I look at studios, they'll send me pictures. Sometimes it's only shirts fanning across the top and then pants fanning across the bottom, right? That's great. I, I can see that they're working to understand outfits. They're like, well, that shirt goes with that, right? But we want to show them. We want their eyes to look floor to ceiling. Maybe we put pants up at the top and the shirt down below and the sweatshirt next to it. So really, everything in their peripherals are going to say that I can all wear together, right? Making it eye-catching, because most people are used to seeing shirts fanning across, but they're not used to seeing pants at the top or sweatshirts and so on and so forth. So making sure you're really creating outfits. Um, maybe in the summer, you'll do all of your tank tops in one area. If somebody wants a tank top, you go in here, right? Um, that's called an item statement. But also know your members. So knowing what they like, if there's a hot um, style or color, making sure that's front and center. The A location is the center face out of your wall. Now, a lot of people, this will happen. You'll get new merchandise and you just put the product where it fits, but then it ends up on the bottom U bar. Well, you can't see the graphic. Or they'll face out a sweatshirt that's new, but there's a graphic on the back. Well, let's turn that puppy around, right? Let's show them that there's a graphic on the back. So really thinking in depth will drive business because even the silly things, when if this side is the reformers, making sure your graphics are facing people because as they're trying to look for a clock and they're like, how much longer? They see that cute graphic facing out and they're like, I need to look at that after class. These things, these are how people shop. So keeping that in mind. We want to put sale not on the slat wall. We want to put it in a little mini area, right? But we don't want it to be the first thing they see. We want it to be the farthest away from what they see. Why? Because we want to sell full price all day long, full price. So one important um, point is that if you have the slat wall sale, right? So we're going to envision that sales here. This is so silly that I use this, but you get the gist. OK, sale is here. This is all full price, but that's sale. And this is, this is a true thing. It's in studios all the time. Sale is there. What a consumer thinks, and I'm 100% not lying about this, is that when it's here at full price, they think, I'm just going to wait because it's going to go to here and then here, which is sale, and I get a discount, right? But when we remove it and keep this full price 100% all the time, never sale, except for a promotion if you're doing softer grand open, right? And everything's on pro, promo. This is all full price. The four way is if you wanna find a sale item, they know every single time that that's where they'll find it. If you've ever walked into Nordstrom or Neiman Marcus, do you find sale front and center of their floor? No. Do you find it on wooden hangers? No. You find it in the back on plastic hangers, half on the ground. You know, we're not going to do that, but they're still going to be on wooden hangers too. But I'm just making the point that it's, it's in its own area and it looks different and it's not front and center. So we need to remember that. It's very important. Um, and offering sales too often, we don't want to do that either. We want to surprise and delight our members, of course course, but we don't want to encourage that if you come into my studio, it, it'll be on sale at some point. So if it's not this week, it's next because I'm saying 20% off because I felt like it and it was raining and 20%, right? We want to keep it to a minimum, especially if you get out of your grand open, you want to hold off on that for a little while because you don't want to get that embedded in their minds. Final few merchandise. 
final few merchandise is two or less of an item. When you have final few merchandise, and this will happen, you want to, I don't want to use the word hide, but I'm going to use the word hide, the final few. So you're going to do that on a waterfall bar, right? The one that's facing out because you're not going to see how it appears when it's on a U-bar. A U-bar you can see and it looks disorganized, right? You see like one random blue shirt. It looks messy. So if you hide it behind a similar fitting style on a waterfall bar, they'll stumble upon it when they're looking at whatever they're looking at but it will create a very elevated appearance if it's not on the side. Does that make sense? On page 10 starts all of the retail standards. This is by far one of the most important things you could do for your retail space is implement all of these. These are the details. These are the nitty gritty things that nobody thinks to do, but once they're done, you're like, dang, my space looks really, really good. Um, but this creates an elevated shopping experience. So going back to going into a Neiman Marcus or a Nordstrom, you can tell that things are different, right? It's cleaner than most stores. It's elevated. You notice everything's on fancy hangers. So these are some things that you can do in your studio to create that boutique fitness atmosphere. We offer a really quality membership, right? And it's not the cheapest thing. I was paying for it, right? But if your retail space doesn't match that, we lose members because they're like, I don't feel like this is really an elevated studio. But when they walk in and it's 100% all the time because the retail space really isn't that big, it's, it's pretty small. If you can keep that 100% all the time, they're gonna be so proud that they work out at this awesome studio who's killing it in all areas, memberships, retail, all of it. So starting with end-to-end -end hanging. It sounds silly, but as you can see on 10 and 11, these pants are very, very organized, hung on the bottom hangers. They all appear the same size, and you can probably imagine when you see pants in other stores, how the hanger clips are right in the middle, and there's all that extra fabric on either side. Can you think of that? This eliminates that. It really makes it clean. Um, you can even tuck the tags up. Now that will create a cleaner inventory as well because if a tag is misplaced or ripped off, it is a big pain to reticket and find and get a new tag for that matter. So making sure that all of the tags are nicely tucked. Dusting and waxing the fixtures. So do you guys go shopping? and you are searching, right, in one of the fixtures and you hear that dreaded, like, scratching noise, you know, and you just, like, hear it and it just makes you cringe, well, that noise can be eliminated by getting some wax paper and wiping down the fixture and it lets them slide really, really nicely. Sounds silly, but it works. So doing that if your um, fixtures are squeaky, Clean folds, if you choose to fold down product, this is on page 13, making sure that the folds are very, very clean. Now, what will happen is your clean folds will look amazing and then somebody will ruin them. <laughs> Happens all the time. But that is the point, is because it just looks so compelling that they wanna go over and be like, what, what is this? I wanna touch it, I wanna look at it. And then you'll have to refold it again. It'll probably take you 10 minutes but it's worth it because people are actively looking at it and it's driving them over to that space. So there's a, it sounds silly, but there's a how to fold in here. Stick with the basics, stick with leggings, very basic, easy to fold. Stick with t-shirts, um, things that have a boxy fit, tank tops. Don't, don't try and fold the like high-low shirt, just give yourself not an anxiety attack. Just stick to the basic things. Um, and it will look like page 13. Tucking all the price tags. So we talked about the pants, that's great. We're tucking the tags up. But what about the shirts? I see this all the time. We're not trying to deceive anybody by hiding the tag. We should be helping them with that item, right? Getting it off the hook for them, telling them about it, finding their size, and also telling them the price. 
but it appears so much more clean if you put the price tags in the arm. Um, tank tops will work, some short sleeves. If it doesn't work, like a long sleeve tag, don't fold it into the sleeve, that's weird. Just if it doesn't work, just don't do it. But if you can, uh, tuck the tags. Clear walkways using wooden hangers. All of the merchandise is sized from smallest to largest. And hanger spacing. Hanger spacing is very important on 15 and 16. This will create that elevated look that you want so badly to have in your studio. And the best part is, is if for some reason you're low on merchandise and you just had a killer weekend, spacing all of the merchandise out will make it appear full. Um, so that is a way to kind of make a, I don't know what I'm trying to say, make it look more full. Um, if you guys do choose to get a steamer, you can get that again on Amazon, Target. They have the little handheld ones. I highly recommend doing that to the fronts of all of the merchandise, just so you don't give off the vibe that if I purchase this shirt, it will look wrinkled. We want to make sure it looks really clean, um, wrinkle-free, and all of that. And then on 17 is... Even the small, small details, like the hoodies, pulling the strings, tying the bow, and really making it, maybe even rolling the sleeves. At convention, um, me and Amanda were merchandising and we were rolling the sweatshirt sleeves, and it looks really cute. Just little details like that, it really does draw people in. So, um, trying to find ways to win there. Um, okay, some markdowns. This is getting ahead of ourselves here because most of you have not gone and opened the studio yet. But this is very important when you do have merchandise that you've had for a while or maybe it's not selling. So the way this manual works is there are some tips on what to do with product that isn't moving first before putting it on sale. So what we're going to run through here is what to do first. Um, has, has the product been re-merchandised? So has it been hung multiple different ways and in different areas? Or maybe has it been folded, right? Because maybe somebody, it just sells better folded. That happens. Does the staff have product knowledge? This is probably the biggest area that I find um, an opportunity in is people just have, I'll be on a call and I'll ask them because they're telling me about an item that's just not selling. And I said, well, has everybody tried it on? And they're like, no, no one has. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, okay, hang up the phone and go try it on because it's so important. Maybe they'll find out that you have to go down an entire size and then it fits amazing, but nobody knew and kept trying it on and it was big and baggy. Or maybe there's something that's just not that great about it. Maybe the sleeves are, are tight and, and it's just not flattering. Who knows? But you're not going to know it until you try it on. And sorry, guys, you can't try it on, but just have somebody else try it. Um, but that's, that really is one of the biggest areas, it's, is product knowledge. And then really having people try it on. Try to suggest that product and say, I'd love to see this on you. I think it would look really great. And even if you're like, oh, that's been one that's not doing that well, at least maybe they could provide some feedback. Like, I just didn't like the way that it was short in the front. Or whatever it is, you'll find out more if you have them try it on as well. Have you done a selling contest first? So I like to incentivize my staff first before offering a discount to my members because we value our staff, right? And we do value our members, but we want them to be successful in their selling. And so maybe that for that particular item, maybe that is boosting the commission 5%, right? If you're offering 10%, maybe it's 15 for that week. Or maybe for every item sold, they get a little $5 gift card, or whoever sells that item the most wins a leave early card. Just get creative and incentivize them to sell it, right? Um, setting goals for them is so important. So at the end of every month, following up, right? Seeing different strategies on how to sell product, maybe just that one or maybe all of it in general. Um, but I would definitely recommend incentivizing the team first before putting it on sale. Then have you run a, ran a promotion? So in the case that you're doing a really fun um, Pilates and wine event or you're hosting a, um, a member appreciation, 
try running a promotion. For that one night, you get 15% off this selected merchandise. Or, and can anybody tell me, this is one thing that I forgot to ask earlier, what the difference is between a promotion and a sale? Okay, so a promotion is something that will go on a, a temporary sale. So it might go on, I'll use the example of a grand open. A promotion's going to be 20% off for Saturday and Sunday. On Monday, everything's back to full price, right? That's a promotion, it's very temporary. Now a sale, once something goes on sale, it does not go back to full price. It stays on sale, and then it goes on sale again, and then it's gone. Never returns back, it doesn't go back. Um, so that's very important to try before you put it on, a, on an actual sale that just gets discontinued. If you've tried those things and it's not working, I have supplied a recommended markdown. This page two just describes how to run a promotion, so you can jump to page three. Um, page three provides a recommended markdown cadence. So the markdown cadence is for you guys to utilize if you choose. If you decide not to follow that one, that's fine. Maybe you do 10% smaller on each markdown. It's up to you, but this is a guide. Um, so if you've tried all of the things on the first page, it's still not working, you're really just having a hard time, you're then going to mark it on sale, you're gonna get it out of the doors, and you're gonna bring something else in so that you can continue to offer a new assortment. So the first markdown at 60 days is 20% off. The second markdown is at 30% off. And then the final markdown's at 120 days, I know that's a long time, at 40% off, but we no longer apply commission because at that point nobody's selling it, so we already know that. But we wanna just get our money back, we wanna break even on that, and we wanna reinvest our money elsewhere. But we always want to remember that is the life of retail sometimes. You will have an item that just doesn't sell. So we don't wanna dwell on that. We don't wanna think about it and lose sleep over this item that didn't sell we just need to acknowledge it, mark it, and move on, right? Reinvest in new, more, you know, maybe that cold shoulder shirt is not something that your members like. So now that you've learned that, you're not going to buy that cold shoulder again. Or maybe it's a color. You'll find out what it is, but just think about those things as you see that sale you know, make those mental notes of, okay, this style didn't work, or I just have too many extra smalls and I need to buy deeper in mediums. Um, just really get to know your members and that will help you not mark down as much product, but there'll always be a little bit. This is an example of the Excel spreadsheet that is available to you on Fran Connect. What it is, and these are the instructions on how to use it, is that the Excel spreadsheet allows you to enter the daily sales from Club Ready into an Excel spreadsheet. You'll learn Club Ready tomorrow. But um, it will allow you to enter daily sales from Club Ready into the Excel and track sales by day. So this will create historicals for you. You'll be able to look back six months from now and say, how did I do on this month? You can look at it at a glance. You can see what your best selling days were and what your worst days are, right? And then you can plan events accordingly, maybe staffing accordingly. Um, but that is so important as you're moving through sustainable business to look back on. And it is written down there, so you don't have to write it down, but we recommend that you set your retail goal at 10% of your total gross revenue by month. Now, that number will differ, of course, by studio, and that is a goal. So it might be robust some months, or it might be crazy achievable some months, but that is the goal that you should be aiming for and ensuring that it's broken down by staff member. We need to ensure that they are pulling their weight because without them, we can't meet our expectation. So whether that's a weekly chat with them or even having them look at the Excel spreadsheet with you to see if they're on target is so important for your guys' business. 10% of your total gross revenue by month. It's in the uh, instruction sheet on the bottom, I believe. Moving. Um, so that is all of the manuals that are here. 
Again, they are all available to download. And the Excel spreadsheet, if you email me, I will definitely give that to you. But I highly recommend you guys utilize these as tools, utilize me as a resource, make your jobs easier. And if you're not too familiar with retail, I feel like you will be after going through a grand open, soft open, and, and in your business. Um, but that's all I have. It was a pleasure meeting all of you. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Email me if you need any of the documents. Thank you guys.